Guys, we're back at Marvel Live and we have another special guest, Jen Bartel. It's so happy to be with you here. Now, I want right off the bat, I want to talk about your sneakers. You got to design Captain Marvel and Thanos sneakers for Adidas. Like, how, how do you even go about that? <laughs> that one was uh, probably the fastest project that ever happened. And, really? and you would think that it would have been in production for a really long time, but uh, basically Foot Locker approached me uh, and within like three weeks, the design was done and it was like off to production. Uh, so it was very, very strange, but really fun to work on. <laughs> well, that answers the question why <laughs> suddenly I was in line getting the sneakers. Oh. And like, when did we announce this? Yeah, what? When was this happening? Right. No, but they're amazing. They're comfortable. I really do own a pa pair of oh the, the Captain Marvel ones. Thank they're you, thank you. great. <laughs> and so for those out there who love your work and like love everything you do, you know, it's you don't just suddenly have a, a pair of sneakers. You don't just suddenly have a cover of a comic book. You know, how did you get your start in comics? Oh, uh, so I went to school for illustration, thinking that I was going to be like an editorial illustrator or I was going to do like children's books. Uh, and I think a lot of that was just because I didn't see a lot of people who look like me working within comics because I've always been a fan. Uh, but it just didn't seem like a viable career path. And so I didn't really pursue it. And uh, it, when I graduated from school, it was like right at the peak of the recession. <laughs> oh, perfect time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I wasn't really getting any uh, illustration jobs either. And I think at that point, I just kind of like given up. And uh, I was working like a retail job. And I just started making fan art and like posting it online. Because I I'd reached this point where I was like, if I can't do this professionally, I'm at least going to like have fun and, and just do it for me. Um, and once I started posting my work online, it, you know, it took a while and I had to kind of be consistent about posting it, but uh, it came across the feed of a couple editors and uh, my first comics opportunity was uh, a Gem in the Holograms cover for IDW. Um, and since then, it's just kind of like blown up. And I think the big thing is once you get your first opportunity in comics, just deliver on time <laughs> yeah, yeah. and communicate and you'll probably get rehired. And that's just what I kept doing, communicating and delivering on time. We have some social questions from yeah. fans at home. Now, what is your favorite Marvel character to draw? Greetings from Spain. Storm, I think it's no secret. I've drawn her so many times now, um, but never really like in any official capacity until just recently when I got to do a variant cover for Marvel 1000 that featured like Storm through the ages and I just love her so much. She's like my childhood favorite. <laughs> is there a particular Storm that like, cause for Storm fans, like yeah. Storm has gone through a lot of iterations. Yep. She's had a number of costumes, a lot of different styles. Is there a particular one that you really love? Yeah, so I mean, obviously I love like the 90s, like cartoon version Storm. I think that's like what a lot of us grew up with. I love that one so much. Well, we got an Ask Marvel segment coming up. Some more questions from social. <laughs> Is there a character or team or series that you haven't been able to draw yet that you want to? Mm. So the first thing that I ever got approached about working on for Marvel uh, was actually a silk cover, but it didn't pan out for scheduling reasons. And since then, I haven't had the opportunity to actually draw silk, like officially. Uh, I did a, a fan art of her recently. I would love to work on something Silk, I think. That's yeah, just because she's a Korean-American character and I'm also a Korean-American and it's just cool. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I love it. I mean, I think that's one of the things that we really love about comic books. For you, you know, as you're drawing your characters, as you're doing covers, <laughs> like you're basically like getting people into the story. Yeah. Like, what are the key, like, essential pieces of a good comic book cover? Ooh, uh, whenever I am working on layouts or compositions for, uh, for covers, I always think about them more from like a design aspect than from a narrative illustration standpoint. Because to me, it, it, I feel like the, the purpose of a cover is to be eye-catching and to you know, really draw someone in to open up the book. Um, and so I always prefer covers that are kind of like evergreen in nature where, uh, you know, they could be applied to any story and they're just a, a good standalone piece. And so, I don't know, that's, I know a lot of people prefer when, um, you know, they have some kind of narrative element to it, but I always think like poster design is kind of like cover design, you know? So your illustrations are incredibly colorful. <laughs> Gorgeous. Now, do you think of color first or does that come later? Uh, I definitely am thinking about color when I'm sketching. 
yeah, it's it's a big part of like how the composition works in general because like this without getting into like the nitty gritty of like color theory, where black meets white is going to be like the spot that people look at first. And if you're working in color, you, you can use complementary colors to do that. So when I'm sketching something, that's the first thing I'm thinking of. That's awesome. Yeah. I hope everyone wrote that down at home. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I also love about you, and you mentioned Chris earlier, and I love the fact that, particularly within the Marvel Universe, a lot of artists know each other, they promote each other's work. Um, you promote a lot of upcoming artists, which I love. It's so, it is so much fun following your Twitter, oh. just in general, but you know, also, you know, your Tumblr, and like, so you, you've got social media on pack. Um, <laughs> How did you, like, what was what was your motivation to start pushing other up-and-coming artists uh, through your social feeds? Yeah, um, I feel like, f for me personally, uh, my career growth has happened so rapidly that it's been, like, I've gotten whiplash, like, every few months. I'm just like, what's happening? Uh, and when I finally realized that I had enough of a platform that, like, people were people were kind of paying attention to what I was saying. I felt like, well, here's an opportunity to highlight people that I think, you know, are deserving and should have more attention. And so, um, yeah, I, I really wanted to at least be able to do that for some of my fellow artists. And I think a really big uh, influence was, honestly, Kelly Sue DeConnick. When she came up with the Visible Women hashtag, I think um, I just looked at that and was like, I could be doing something like that in my daily life too. So I just like make it a point to try and uh, promote people as much as possible. Awesome, Jen, before we let you enjoy the con, yeah. <laughs> how can fans follow you and find your work? Oh yeah, so I am at hey Jen Bartel on both Twitter and Instagram and uh, my Tumblr doesn't really get updated, <laughs> but it's just, uh, it's just Jen Bartel on Tumblr. <laughs>